Hello and welcome to Verified Live. Palestinian officials say an attack at Gaza's largest hospital, Al-Shifa, has killed at least 13 people, including several sheltering in a courtyard. Well, this video is from the hospital. You can hear an explosion and people taking shelter, followed by screams and panic. Israel claims that Hamas, described as a terror organization by the UK and US governments, uses hospitals as bases for military operations. Well, people sheltering in the grounds also recorded the moment and its aftermath. Dr. Marwan Abu Saida, a general surgeon at the Al-Shifa Hospital, told the BBC that the situation was desperate. Here in Shifa, I'm hearing the shooting and bombardment everywhere around me in Shifa Hospital. It is a horrible situation now, and some of the displaced people moved evacuated from Shifa because it is not a safe place to stay in it. But our staff is still there, and our patients in the department is still there, and we are taking of the casualties. Today they bombarded some of our displaced people who were here in Shifa. They moved to one shelter to the school, and they, at the school they were under attack, and more than 15 people killed at that moment. Well, Israeli tanks are reported to have surrounded several other hospitals in Gaza. Let me show you this footage from the Al Rantisi Pediatric Hospital in Gaza City. This footage appears to show Israeli troops positioned outside of the hospital. Witnesses say loud hailers were being used to order anyone who wasn't medical staff or a patient to leave. Well, this footage shows large explosions outside the Indonesian hospital in Gaza. The hospital was not directly struck, but it was hit by shrapnel. Well, Gaza's health ministry says more than 11,000 Palestinians have now been killed since the start of the war almost five weeks ago. They include 4,500 children. The conflict began after Hamas killed more than 1,400 people in Israel on October the 7th. Let's get this latest report from our correspondent, Yolan Nell. Panic and bloodshed in Gaza's Shifa hospital this morning. As families sheltered here, they were caught up in the battles between Israeli forces and Hamas fighters, with deadly results. Israel says it's closing in on the underground tunnels of Hamas. Those terrorists who are staying in the basements underneath Shifa tonight can hear the thundering sounds of tank chains, the bulldozers that pound the ground, they can hear it underground. They hear it and tremble with fear. Last night, this was an attack near the Indonesian hospital further north. And at another hospital in the city, tanks took up positions right outside. Fearful, Gazans are flooding to the south. Israel says that as it's tightening its grip on the Strip's biggest city, it's giving safe passage along this route. The US says Israel's agreed to pauses in fighting and to get more aid into the south. It welcomed the move, but wants more to be done. Uh, these steps will, um, will save lives and will enable more assistance to get to Palestinians in need. At the same time, much more needs to be done. Uh, to protect civilians and uh, to make sure that humanitarian assistance reaches them. Far too many Palestinians have been killed. Far too many have suffered uh, these past weeks. In Paris, world leaders have been gathering at a peace forum with calls to work towards a ceasefire. Palestinian officials condemned Israeli actions. The Israelis don't want any ceasefire because today the Israelis are in the mood of revenge, genocidal revenge, collective killing, killing for the sake of killing, and the goals that they are setting, they will never reach these goals. Queuing hungrily with empty pots in southern Gaza this lunchtime, a hot meal being prepared. The charity says it tries to help as many as it can, but there's never enough to go around. In Gaza, this is a key point in the war, and for Palestinians living there, each day is about survival. Yolanda Nell, BBC News, Jerusalem. Well, a little earlier, I spoke to our diplomatic correspondent, Paul Adams, in Jerusalem, and he told me how complex the currently military operation was in Gaza. 
I think it's a very complex picture today, Matthew, and we are piecing together what we can. But look, this is a military operation taking place in a sizable city, uh, and the information that's coming out is both partisan and fragmentary. So we have to try and figure out what we know and what we don't know. What we do know is that the Israelis now have their military parked pretty much outside at least three of the main hospitals in Gaza, Shifa, Al-Quds, and the Indonesia hospital. Now, all three of those hospitals are ones that the Israelis have said in the past are places where Hamas have some of their infrastructure based. So it's no surprise that the Israelis are focusing on those three hospitals. Uh, what we're also hearing is that there are airstrikes taking place in a number of places. Uh, reports in the last hour or two uh, of bodies being pulled out from a school uh, in the northern part of Gaza City, as many as 50 bodies there. And again, the thing to remember here is that all of you, you know, we're constantly hearing about schools and hospitals. These are the places where civilians are still uh, seeking shelter because they believe that there are places that will be safe because they're UN facilities or because they're hospitals. The Israelis want all of those people out of the way and so they are trying to pressure the civilian population to leave the area, keeping open that corridor to the south, but also making their military presence very, very clearly felt in a number of places. And, Paul, we've seen again those pictures of people leaving uh, the north of the territory. We're nearly five weeks into this conflict. Your assessment of where we are? Well, this battle for Gaza City, which has been going on now for, what, a week or so, uh, is, I think, if you are looking at this from an Israeli perspective, going pretty well. Uh, they are advancing deep into parts of the city. Uh, they do not appear to be incurring many losses on their own side. Um, they have finally persuaded large numbers of those remaining civilians to leave. That is something that they have been trying to do for a very long time. And so they feel that, that the city is theirs to take. How long it's going to take, how many Hamas fighters are still there, uh, where the hostages are. There are so many unknown uh, questions uh, that, you know, we could be having this conversation a week from now and things will look broadly similar. Or all of these hospitals may have fallen into Israeli hands and the Israelis might be starting to turn their attention to the south. We just don't know. It's a very, very fluid, complex uh, situation uh, in which we are being constantly bombarded by information, a good chunk of which is almost certainly exaggerated, not true, misleading, um, and you know we, we have to try and make sense of it. And it's right now, I would say it's as bad as hard as it's been for the last several weeks.